Oh, good morning and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Wednesday, September 8th, the 23rd Wednesday of Ordinary Time, and it is the feast day of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is the birth of the Blessed Mother. Um, so we'll learn about that a little bit um, today uh, in the Gospel, or we're going to talk about that. And so we are celebrating Mary's birthday. I'll have to do some research, actually. That might be a challenge for me, is do some research on how the how the church, um, which Jesus granted us here on earth, um, through St. Peter, I might ask how the church was able to arrive at September 8th, being the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I should know that. I should have done that for this video, but I'll do that afterwards. Maybe you can do that, too, as your challenge for today, by the way. Who knows? Anyway, um... The, the, the gospel will be, will be centered around Mary um, today. Uh, but it's also the feast day of St. Adrian and Natalia of, Nicom of Nicomedia, um, in which they are Christian martyrs who converted to Christianity uh, back in 306 AD, and they were killed for their faith, hence martyrdom. And uh, they were killed together as, as husband and wife. Which I thought was pretty pretty cool to demonstrate that devotion to each other, um, but most importantly to God. <clears throat> so they were killed for their for their faith, which just also shows how convicted they were of their faith. Um, so yeah, so that took place then in the early fourth century. Uh, today's gospel is from Matthew chapter one, verses eighteen through twenty-three. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Now this is how the birth of Jesus came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. You know, it's interesting also, so again, I should do some more research that we're celebrating the feast day of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but yet the reading of today's gospel is the birth of Jesus. So, you know, which I, it's just interesting. I don't know. Well, this is just off the cuff, just my own thoughts going through my mind of, you know, just, just that unification of Jesus and Mary. And without Mary saying, yes, giving us her fiat, giving God her fiat, um, doing the Annunciation, Jesus would not have been here physically. So God would not, would not have been made man unless Mary said yes. So maybe that's why the church said, um, gave today's gospel reading, as the birth of Jesus, even though we're celebrating the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Something to think about, something I don't know, something I need to research more um, and try to pursue that that knowledge on. So, um, so with that being said, um, I think I'm going to kind of go through and like the first challenge, it'll be two challenges. Um, the first challenge will be geared towards married couples or those who are engaged and kind of using Saint Adrian and Saint Natalia, because they're both saints, um, both martyrs of, of, of the church, to use them as as a witness to to grow in faith and trust and make sure that the highest priority in your marriage is God, because they died for God as a martyr. So you can tell that marriage takes three: God, husband, wife. But at the same time, you could also use Joseph and Mary as an example, you know, of just the humility, but then also the the openness to say yes on Mary's part, but then also Joseph to say yes 
and take Mary in after finding out that she's pregnant and it's not his. You know, if you, if you put yourself in those shoes, like how crazy that would be, um, which is why God sent him the angel um, to reveal that, yay, yeah, this is the Son of God. I'm calling you to help raise him up as a man in the human aspect. So that's pretty high calling on Joseph's end as well. Um, but yeah, just Mary and Joseph working working together through marriage to raise the Son of God. No easy task. So you can use use that commitment um, as well and that mother and fatherly role model to, to model yourself, especially if you're raising kids as a husband and wife. Um, so that could be your challenge relative to that. And then um, hopefully that stood out. I, I'm going to read the footnote where it says God is with us because it says that's what that's what Jesus means. God is with us. And the footnote here says that this represents God's promise of deliverance to Judah in Isaiah's time is seen by Matthew as fulfilled in the birth of Jesus in whom God is with his people. So God is physically present um, through Jesus. This name, Emmanuel, is alluded to at the end of the gospel where the risen Jesus assures his disciples of his continued presence. I am with you always until the end of the age. So hopefully we take peace and comfort in that and knowing that no matter what we're going through, highs, lows, anywhere in between, worry, doubt, fear, hope, joy, all the emotions of humanity that we hold, know that God is with us in all of it because that's why Jesus came. Have a great day. God bless and keep it real. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.